Hey everybody, um, this is going to be 510 reteaching as well as the math Excel. Um, so what we're doing on this section is talking about inequalities with less thans and greater thans. So um, on our first example on the reteaching, we have 4x minus 2x squared is less than zero. Um, so the quick way to work these questions is if it's less than, just think of it being and except for if it's a negative sign in front of the x squared term, then you got to flip it because remember when you multiply or divide by a negative one that it flips. So that's the first step. Um, and then for the other step, just set it equal to zero and so then factor out your GCF. And so in this case, 2x times 2 minus x equals zero, which means x is zero and then x is two. So 0 and 2 are your endpoints, and since we said it had to be greater than, um, remember great or means it has to go different directions. So to the left of 0 means x less than 0, and to the right of 2 means x greater than 2. So that's how you do number 1. Um, number 2 actually has the same numbers, except for it says greater than or equal to 0. So you'd think greater than or equal to means or, except there's a negative sign in front, so you gotta flip it and make it and. And so it's still the same two endpoints from zero to two. On number three, um, x squared plus five x is less than zero. Um, on these problems, you could really work it any way you want to, whether you wanna factor it, graph it, complete the square, use the quadratic formula or whatever. Um, and then after you do that, then put in your ands and ors and less ands and greater thans. Um, this one seemed easy to factor, so that's what I did because two times three is six and two plus three is five. And so that's how I did that. So this is x equal negative two and x equal negative three. And since it's a less than, it's gonna be an and uh, because in front of the x squared, it's positive. So that means your endpoints are negative three to negative two um, for x. Now this one, when you graph it, um, you're gonna have a positive y-intercept. And so that's gonna look like this. It doesn't cross the axis at all, so that's no real solutions. Um, you don't have to figure out the imaginary solutions when we have inequalities. So we just put no, no real solutions. Um, this one, we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Uh, so it's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be an or. And when we graph this one, 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Um, it looks like that, and we go to analyze graph, then zero the graph between there and there is negative four zero. Menu analyze zero. Between here and here is one and a half zero. So that's what I put over here for your x-intercepts. Um, and since it was an OR graph, then it means um, to the left of negative four in this case, and to the right of one and a half. So think about what it's asking about. It's asking about where is it greater than or equal to zero. So that's basically above the x-axis. Okay, so up here and up here. Um, and then I have the template set up for six, seven, and eight, but um, you'll need to finish working those. It's a greater than, uh, but it has a negative in front, so you have to change it to less than, so it's an and. So a number less than x, less than a number. Um, this one's a greater than sign, so it's an or. And so to the left of something and to the right of something. And this one is a less than, so it's an and. So a number less than x, less than another number. Um, so those are some examples, and you need to finish six, seven, and eight. Uh, and then on this one, um, what I did was I uh, set it equal to zero, so I brought my 5x and my 24 term over, 
And then the ways to get 24 are 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Since I had a middle that was negative 5x, I wanted to use negative 8 with a positive 3. And so then my endpoints are positive 8 and negative 3. Um, and then go back to it. It was a greater than, and so it's an or. So um, that means to the left of the smallest number, which is negative 3, or to the right of the um, 8. I mean, sorry, uh, to the right of, yeah, to the right of 8. Okay, um, now for this other part, the other way to work it is to graph it. And so when we do that, um, I'm going to graph x squared minus 5x minus 24. Um, so there's the graph. Um, again, we want above, and so that'd be this endpoint and this endpoint. Um, the other way to graph it is uh, graph the front side as x squared and the back side is 5x plus 24. Uh, so the reason why I'm showing you this way is so that you know that um, you need to adjust your window. And there is such a thing as a line crossing a parabola in one place or more than one place. So um, what I have to do here is adjust my window. That's my Y max here. I'm putting is 20. So now you can see that really does cross. Uh, and then think about the parabola extending and then the line would extend. So let's see if that crosses also. Okay, it's not letting me get to it. Well, yeah, I did. Okay. I was just going to go to my settings and then change it um, if that didn't work. So now just go to your intersection between here and here. That's negative 3, negative 9. I mean positive 9. Um, and then the intersection between here and here is 864. So um, again, to the left is up, and then to the right is also up. You don't want the part in between. Okay, so those are the traditional problems um, on the reteaching. Um, now for the math Excel example, um, the main thing I wanted to mention again was um, the easiest method is work it however you want with equal to zero, then do less than for and unless it's negative x squared, then you have to flip it and use greater than for or unless it's negative x squared. So that's the part that's um, that's important because uh, when I followed the view and example, it looked complicated, honestly. I mean, this has a, a process with it and it has four different inequalities and you got to test them. And that's more complicated than it needs to be. All we do is we set um, x squared minus 196 equal to zero and then take our square root to get positive and negative 14. And then you notice it's a less than, so it's an and, so it goes between. That's all you really have to do. You, have to, you don't have to do all this extra uh, mess. OK, um, on this one, um, it's less than, so it's an and, except you're multiplying by negative 1, so it changes the direction. Um, and so you just change every single sign. And so then this one, the easiest way to do it was to factor it. And so I'm going to use x minus 10 and x plus 5. I need alternate signs because my c term is negative, And I needed my 10 to be negative because it was a negative 5x. So again, when you're thinking about factoring, um, do it that way. Um, and so then we would think of um, a greater than, so it's going to be an or like this. And it was to the left of 5 and to the right of 10, because all you do is switch your signs. 
Again, this part with the four inequalities is weird. So um, just notice that we have x equal to 10 and x equal to negative 5. And you put the biggest one on the right, the smallest one on the left, and since it's greater than, we make it go like that. Okay, so there's the first two. Um, number three, um, this one we have 2x squared plus 26x plus 84 greater than or equal to zero. Um, I noticed all of them were even numbers, and so I divided every one of them by two. Um, so I get x squared plus 13x plus 42. Now that it's smaller numbers, you might be able to think of 6 times 7 is 42, and 6 plus 7 is 13. And all those terms had to be positive because we had a positive 42 as well as a positive middle term. Uh, and so then we could just think x equal negative 6, x equal negative 7. So on your number line, negative 7 would be here, negative 6 would be here. It's a greater than, and so it's going to go opposite directions. And so that's why it's to the left of negative 7 and to the right of negative 6. Okay, on number four, uh, this one wants you to graph the inequality and it's multiple choice. So what I did was I factored out um, the greatest common factor, which was x, and I'm left with x minus nine. You want, in this case, where it's less than zero, which is below, um, and we can get our x-intercepts because it's in the factored form, so zero and nine. So the blue graph is below, and that's our answer. So you can think from 0, less than x, less than 9. And again, that's because the entire parabola is below 0. So that's how that works. OK, number 5 and 6 are some of the longer ones. Um, there's only eight problems on the math Excel, but uh, this one's definitely one of the longer ones. I think if you go step by step in the math Excel view an example, that it'd be like 20 steps or something. Um, so the function um, negative x squared plus 22x models the profit y in dollars earned by a tour guide when x people sign up for a tour, how many people should you use um, to get a ticket for the profit to be at least $72? So what you do is you take your inequality and you set it greater than or equal to the number that's given. Um, and so then I uh, move the 72 to this side. And then um, the way I did this on paper was I factored out the negative sign and flipped the signs. And um, then your AC part is 72, and your B term is negative 22. Um, so we're going to do 72 divide by x. Seventy-two divide by x. Again, we don't care about the graph, um, its inverse variation and all that. Uh, we just care about the table. Think about if you multiply x and y, you get 72. Um, so what we want is a 22 difference, like 4 and 18, except um, that's positive. We'd need the negatives for both. Um, so that's how we get that. So that's what we use in the factored part. So you've got your negative sign, then x minus 18, x minus 4. And so then you just flip your signs, so you get 4 and 18. Um, since it's now uh, less than or equal to, because we multiply by negative 1, then you change um, the greater than to less than, so it's between those numbers. 
On the next one, we want the profit to be at least 121. Uh, by the way, either on B or C, um, on Math Excel it looks weird because the question part might be at the top of your screen, and there might be a, a middle part also that asks you something else. Um, so you, you have to look at both parts of your screen. Uh, this one would want to work the same way because it says at least um, 21. Uh, 121 and so um, we bring that over and then that's a perfect square um, because the square root of 121 is 11 and so we get the negative sign in front factored out and then x minus 11 squared so that would look like that so for any value of x the result is no solution um, because it's negative it never crosses the x-axis um, let's look at that. Negative x squared plus 22x. Menu 4a. And then I'm going to, I know that'd be 0, 0. Um, but then over here, um, let's go like 30. Okay, so what we want is when the uh, profit is at least $121. So we go to F2 and put 121. And let's see, it looks pretty close. It might cross, let's see. Go to the Analyze Graph, go to Maximum. It's asking which graph I'm talking about, and it's the blue graph I'm talking about. So you gotta click the blue graph and then go between here and here. Um, now, my maximum is exactly 121, um, but there's no answers that are valid. Okay, the next part is, um, is it possible to lose money, which means make a negative profit? Um, so if we have this inequality less than zero, um, we have the same endpoints. And it'd be if you don't have anybody go on the trip or if you have more than 22 people. Now, you may wonder, you know, why would you not make money if there's, you know, 23 people or 25 people? Because you get more money for each ticket you sell. Except uh, 22 in this case may be the maximum number of people that fit on the bus. And so you might have a mostly empty bus for the second bus. And so um, if there's more than 22 people, you could lose money. Okay, um, on our next one, a friend plans to use 70 feet of fencing to surround three sides of a vegetable garden. Uh, the fourth side is bordered by a wall, um, so it's going to look like that. Write a function when the area, um, or that models the area when the length is x feet. So the length is the longest side, so that's x. And if it's 70 total feet combined, then we do 70 divided by 2 is 35. So then this part right here is 35 minus a half x, and this part is also the same thing because they're equal, and then this was x. So our formula is area equal length times width, and so you just multiply those. So it's 35x minus a half x squared. Um, now we want to know when the area is bigger than 300 feet. So how we solve this is put your parabola expression on the left and then put greater than 300. Um, and so the first thing I did is I moved my 300 over and put it greater than zero. 
then I put it in decreasing um, powers, like the x squared term first, then the x, and then the number. And uh, this is where I switched it to be equal because that's the easiest way. Um, just switch it to equal to zero so you don't confuse yourself. Uh, now we do need to get rid of this little fraction. We have a negative a half in front, and so we have to multiply by negative two, which switches the sign of all three terms. So this 300 now became 600. So whatever your number is, is going to double. The next part is you've got to factor this. So on my example, um, when I have 600, the best way to factor it would be 10 times 60. Because if I do negative 10 minus 60, I get negative 70. Um, however, when I helped somebody on this earlier today, uh, theirs was a perfect square. Um, so another example showed 30 less than x less than 30 as your answer. Um, so just keep in mind that uh, that's possible to show up that way. Um, if I try to work backwards to figure out what that was, I think it was x squared minus 60x plus 900. Yeah. So that'd be x minus 30 times x minus 30. So negative 30 times negative 30 is 900. And negative 30x minus another 30x is negative 60x. So that person only had one endpoint. And so their example was 30 less than x less than 30. So the numbers obviously change um, based on like your similar question. Okay, on the next one we're doing the same idea. It says greater than 600, and so we use the same process and um, double everything and put it in this order. For 1,200, we're going to use 30 and 40. And that's because negative 40x minus 30x is negative 70x. Um, then you flip your signs, and so it's between 30 and 40. Uh, the next part says, is it possible for the area to be bigger than 700? Uh, now, the number one thing on this is to use your original equation. So um, when we use 35x, whoops, let me go back to it. When we use 35x minus a half x squared, Uh, then we've got to do menu 4a. Oops, that needs to be visible. Um, then go to zoom out and go to the right a few times. Okay, there we go. Now, it wants an area of 700, so I'm going to type in 700, and that doesn't happen. It doesn't cross. Uh, so if you go to the maximum, menu 6, 3, uh, the maximum of the blue graph between here and here is 612.5. So um, that's your maximum, and so that answer is no, because 612.5 is smaller than 700. Um, there was a way on Math Excel uh, which showed you to use this formula negative b over 2a, but um, it's just the vertex. So it's, it's a lot easier just to do it and get your y value. If you do the formula, then you have to do your negative b over 2a and then find your y answer. Okay. Um, then you have a problem like this where it's talking about symmetry in the table. And in this case, it's talking about having y greater than 0. And so you can see that would be to the left of um, negative 9 and to the right of 9. And so that's what we want. Um, I did want to point out that you have symmetry with your y values where these match up and these match up, which meant this had to be your vertex. 
and these are your x-intercepts. And so that's what we ended up using. Uh, since we wanted y positive, it's those ways. So x less than negative 9 or x greater than 9. Um, and on this one, we want the same thing, but we want it for y less than or equal to 0. Uh, mine had the exact same table, and so I just want the inside now. So x trapped between the negative 9 and the 9, which is um, the and, which is called the sandwich theorem. X had to be in the middle of, or somewhere between negative 9 and 9. Um, also, just one quick comment. We're going to skip 511 because um, it's a review. It's something we've already done before. And chapter 5 is the longest um, chapter in the book. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Hope that helps. Have a good one.